no camera detected. And I'm like, I'm detecting a camera right there, Microsoft. It's right there. And no Sherlock Holmes, but I will detect the f*** out of that camera. Hard rock. Hell's probably a lot more organized. This is more of a purgatory. Definitely the DMV of Dante's Inferno. Hard rock. I said actually like four times now. I think that... Well, hold on. Nope. Ah, yeah. Hard rock. Can't magically pull a USB 3 out of my ass, apparently. Not here, not there, not over there, not with a fox, not with a box. Hard rock lunch box. Oh, Jesus Christ. What is going on, everybody? What is going on? So much stuff going wrong in so little time. I'm so sorry I'm late. I honestly don't fully understand what happened yet. So let's recap, shall we? <laughs> so I have a new checklist to avoid, let's just call them accidental errors <laughs> on the Hard Rock Lunchbox and the Top 20. I have a list. I have a checklist. And I started some of that early. Um, I was using this laptop right here that I use. This this is the droid I'm looking for. Uh, I was using this laptop to work on um, so this project that I'm working on. I, I don't really want to talk about it just yet, but I'm working on this project that I needed my laptop for. Double super secret probation project. Um, so I disconnected it. So I actually made sure last night to go get it and hook it back up, which is fine because this, this laptop is actually the same one that I use to record vocals whenever I'm going into my other studio. Um, when I'm just doing like quiet time. quiet time. So it's not unusual for me to do that, but it was unusual for me to set it back up last night and I had it today and I turned it back on. And I plugged everything back in and then I just didn't bother to look again. Like I was so ready on time. Like I was just so on time. I was so on time that the universe would no longer let me be on time. It's like when you wake up and you're like, oh, cool, I'm early for school. It's like 7.30, and then it's actually Wednesday instead of Tuesday, and you've missed your math final. That kind of thing. So then I come to say it to do the show for you people, because I know how you people get, and that's literally you people. By the way, why is it all shaking? There is, some, is that stable? Is, that, is it stable now? What is it? Uh, it's more stable now, so we're just going to go with that. Actually, I'm going to change this setting because I can, and I'll explain to you why I've got to change all these settings in a minute. Oh, I didn't even know. I didn't even know I could do what I just did. <laughs> That's just, oh, excuse me, sir. Oh, man. I can micro move the camera without even touching it. Shit's about to get real here on the box. Um, anyway. Yes. So I did all that. I hooked everything back up, and I came in, and I uh, it was literally three minutes before the show. So 11.57 here on the East Coast. Like, in, in Hard Rock Lunchbox land, that is, like, hours early. <laughs> right? I think anybody that knows this show and has been part of it in the chat, which you can be part of at 99wnrr.com, or just go to hardrocklunchbox.com. It'll bring you right over. But it's a link to bring you right over. But as anybody knows, 11.57... Me being ready for this show is like, oh my god, who's who's got to die? Like it's literally one of those final destination things. Um, but yeah, here I was, and I come in and sit down and look at the camera. It's like, no camera detected. And I'm like, I'm detecting a camera right there, Microsoft. It's right there, and no Sherlock Holmes. But I will detect the fuck out of that camera because there it is, right there. The camera's like, nope. So I had to unplug it, reboot it, and all of those stuff, put it back in, and then all of a sudden, poof, it worked. But it worked, like, super wide angle, and, like, there's not a lot of smoke and mirrors going on here, but there is... Oh God, I am so fat again. Sorry. There's not a lot of smoke and mirrors, but there are a lot of curtains and banners going on here, so I do try and have a backdrop. Otherwise, you would actually see the station from which I ship all Rebel 9 merchandise, CDs, and... Uh, Vinyl. Vinyl's still available, by the way. Rebel9.com. Check it out. We actually, we're never going to press more of it again, so um, 
think we've got like 20 or 30 left. So maybe get on that if you want a Rebel 9 vinyl. Uh, we'll have it at the shows this weekend if you want to buy it. We'll sign it for you and stuff like that. But uh, enough about self-promotion for now. We've got plenty of promotion coming up anyway. Uh, but if I took this down, you would basically see the hell. Probably not even hell. The hell is probably a lot more organized. This is more of a purgatory. Definitely the DMV of Dante's Inferno is definitely behind me. And it's just horrendous because when I do other Zoom meetings and stuff, that's the backdrop. And it's always so funny because I'm on with other people that are definitely, like, blurring their backgrounds. Like, some people are like, oh, cool, I'm on the moon. Like, yeah, I don't think you are. But, like, I don't even bother. It's like, look, this is literally what my life looks like. If you want to just, you want to know why I'm late to everything, like, this is a perfect example of why. So anyway, that's why I have the batter. So it was like I come in and it's, like, super widescreen. Now I had to figure out how to fix that. And it's so funny because, like, it's, like, it's tech as I am, like, I am. I work in tech. I write software, and I understand a lot about tech. Uh, but bec- I think because of that, I am a very set it and forget it kind of guy. Um, so once I get something to work, like I don't mess with it. Like I mess, I, I fuck with my band constantly. But well, not Noodle so much, but Tony and Kaz because Tony more so than Kaz. Although Kaz is definitely really good at it from time to time. They will mess with their sounds, their pedals, like, throughout an entire practice. Now, Tony will tell you that he's just adjusting his volume, and I'm here to tell you that if that's all you're doing, then, then you can you are spending way too much time adjusting your volume. I think I think Tony's being disingenuous, and I think if he was being completely honest, he would be like, yeah, every now and then it's a little bit more than my volume. But maybe it is. Who am I to judge? Tony's a professional sound guy slash whatever Tony is, and he would probably know better than me. But... I know he spends a lot of time bending over, <laughs> and not like that. Well, I mean, I don't know what he does outside of band practice. Maybe he does spend a lot of time bending over. At band practice, he spends a lot of time bending over, fully closed, playing with knobs on the ground. He does. I don't. Kaz, I don't know what happened between the last show and this practice, but apparently somebody ghosted his computer in his computer panel board and changed every single patch in it plus every dial on it and then every dial on his reference monitor. We'll actually talk more about that, actually, because I actually... Did I say... I said actually like four times now. I think that... Well, hold on. Nope. Ah, yeah. I said the magic word. Now slime has to jump on my head, doesn't it? I don't... I don't know. Uh, so anyway, so I had to figure all that out. And I just, honestly, I don't know how to do it. I said it the one time, and it was great. And that's why I just found all these new buttons. Plus, there's updates all the time. So it's like top is down, left is right, all that other stuff's going on. So who knows? I will tell you that I finally got it all working and stuff, and I'm still having performance issues. So yeah, there's that. Can't magically pull a USB 3 out of my ass, apparently. Not here, not there, not over there, not with a fox, not with a box. What are we even doing here? I don't even know. I had something to say. But, um, actually, it's just so trying to figure out everything. So I had my checklist, and that wasn't working. But it's working now, so that's good. Oh, and then I turned on the software. This is great. I turned on the software uh, that I used to run the show, to broadcast it to all you good people. And it came up, but basically it was like, no files. No files! This show's going to get boring really fast if there's no files. I mean, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do any of that shit. Oh. Is there a more annoying talk show host than me? Like, is there? Like, maybe? I don't know. There is. I've been listening to a lot of right-wing uh, stuff lately just to kind of check up on what's going on like i just want to point something out like i am so tired of people just being stupid like i I know okay okay, this is going to be controversial and i know like i know it's a bad idea to be like why don't we just like all get rid of the stupid people but like don't you kind of feel like we could drive to like wyoming like all of us would just like kind of like come on everybody let's go and then, like, get to Wyoming, and then we'll just all the smart people just leave real fast. And they'll be like, oh, I don't know. I feel like that's how we used to take the dog to the vet. I know it's how we used to get our dog in the car. Uh, when, when I was younger, uh, my mom and I, my mom or I, or my mom and I, when my dog would get out, we would go in the car 
Uh, and we just drive around and be like, Rosie, come on, come on. Rosie was a beautiful Airedale mix. She was very, she was a great dog. Um, but we'd be like, come on, get in the car. And my dog loved being in the car. And so she would like escape out of the house and then we'd go get the car. I'd be like, come on, get in the car. She'd be like, oh, this is awesome. This is totally what I wanted. And then we'd drive right back home. She's like, ah, oh, man, this is bullshit. Fall for it again. I can't believe it. But I don't want to do that to all the people. I just, I see so many things and I'm like trying to cull stuff a little bit, like what I see, because the reality is like, I've been saying it for years. So like, I, I kind of, I, I go on like social media. Like I don't, I don't argue on Instagram, right? Like for me, Instagram is just pure whatever. Uh, and that's, and that's what I want. Um, and I am going to start removing people on Instagram because I'm getting tired of it. My Instagram feed is basically, uh, the Cincinnati zoo, um, bands I know. I follow a pig and I follow a duck. <laughs> Highly recommend both, by the way. Uh, Cincinnati Zoo, I've been talking about Fiona the Hippo. If you aren't on Team Fiona, like, why are we even friends? Because Team Fiona is, like, the place to be. Um, but if you haven't checked that out, you are missing out. Especially now that they got a new cheetah. Looks like Rosie is the name of the cheetah. I can't. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. They're they're usually good about putting the name and then the pronunciation. But I thought, I thought it was pronounced Rosie, but... They have also Rico, the porcupine, who just, like, eats celery and stuff like that. It's just awesome. They have giraffes. They have ostriches. Like, and I don't know how you feel about birds, but I think ostriches definitely get a pass on the bird thing. You have a bird thing? Uh, but my feed is just, like, great. I, like, I love that stuff. I, I follow the Do You Even Lift, which is making fun of people at the gym, which I could not recommend more. And then I follow bands, and then I follow other people that are, like you know, big Rebel 9 fans or whatever, because it seems respectful to do that, right? Unless it's a private account, like, then I won't follow you, because I'm, it's the band account. And if I was doing this a personal account, I think it'd be different, but it's the band account, so I'm pretty cool with that. But uh, people are definitely creeping in with their bullshit, and I just, I don't want to deal with, like, political and social issues, like, on Instagram so much, like, because it's where I go to kind of escape. But I've been saying for years, like, I go on Facebook, and I want to, like, that's where I go to fight with people, because the reality is, like, most of the people that I know, that I talk to on a regular basis... Agree with me. And, like, you can't... Like, I can be just as mad as some of the stuff that's going on in the world. And I even said to the band, like, they were like, why do you fight with people on Facebook? And I was like, well, because I need somebody really like, to just, like, release this, like, anger. Like, we're being wronged in the world. Like, And I am... I'm no superhero, but I definitely have a very strong moral compass, and it really flips me out when things that are, you know, things that are wrong are being rewarded, and nobody seems to care, and nobody's coming to fix that, like law enforcement, the Supreme Court. Like I've been saying, the Supreme Court is not your friend. It's never been designed to be your friend. But, like, these things are not being addressed. So a lot of times, like, I'll just, I'll need to blow off that steam, and I, I remember saying to the band, it's like, well, I can come here and yell at you guys, or I could just go on Facebook and pick on stupid people and they were like well just keep doing that and that's a smart move <laughs> problem is it doesn't really give me any satisfaction and there are way way more of them than there are of me i mean i know like uh most of my friends are smarter than me in terms of um the way they use social media like jimmy years ago was like dude i'm no, i'm not doing that I'm, I'm using social media as a tool for what i'm doing and i was like yeah man i'm going to aspire to do that and then it would turn out i would fail miserably at it and it's unfortunate because it's cost me stuff it's cost my band stuff but like i don't know man it's 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 hard for me to just sit idly by a lot of times so i don't uh but i know that over the weekend like mikey women had posted something about like another mass shooting because they were like at the zoo and like it just it's, dude it's it's and he's like, you know, when are we going to take this seriously? Like, when are we going to address this? Like, isn't this worth it? And it's like, I answered, I answered because I'm an idiot, and I was just like, yeah, we address this all the time. It's just, you know, most of us that do don't do it on Facebook anymore because all we do is we get trolled by like trolls and, and people that are like, oh, you don't like this country, leave. It's like, no, no, no. And the one that really got me over the weekend, and I'm, you know, saying this a couple times, it's just the the lunacy of the actual statement like so many people are like po and this is where i'm actually going to start dropping people off instagram because this is where i started seeing it and i don't need it because i don't want instagram to make me mad like i'm on instagram like twice a day at best you know for maybe to just to answer anything any questions or react to any posts especially like when there's shows coming up um but the rest of the time i, I literally want to see what fiona's up to i really don't give a shit what most other people are up to but fiona the hippo all day, every day. Like if I had a if I had a camera just to watch what was going on in the Cincinnati Zoo, I probably wouldn't get anything done because it's just so peaceful. And I got it. Like they get it. Like Fiona gets it. Rico gets it. Like they get it. 
but anyway, the one I've been seeing that's really been flipping me out, like it was over the 4th of July holiday, and everyone's like, you know, if it wasn't for people that were armed, you wouldn't, or you're, the only reason you're celebrating today is because of people that were armed. And I, I want to acknowledge how manipulative that is, and whoever started it started it for a reason, and it's brilliant, and the... You know, the Republican noise machine has always been so much better at starting that kind of shit than, than the left. The left, by the way, the liberals are, are horrible on messaging. Like, as far as I can tell, I am the best messenger on the left, and I don't, you know, want the job. I am not qualified in it, but, like, it is unbelievable how bad anything liberal or anything Democratic is messaged and how brilliantly everything Republican is, is, is messaged. And I don't know if that's because people just that can manipulate tend to lean that way. You know, I guess if you're manipulating people around, you know, people around you, if that's what you're doing, like for a living and a lifestyle, you're probably not necessarily going to care if their kids go to school. You know what I mean? So maybe it just, it's one of those correlative things. I don't know what causes what, but I just, I do know that. So, I mean, so yeah, the whole post is like, you know, the reason you're celebrating the 4th of July you know, is, you know, is because people were armed. And the reality is, like, that's not factually accurate. Like, the reason we won the War of Independence is because people were armed. But it's also because we had a standing army, kind of like right now. Like, liberal or not, like, we have a standing army. And I personally want one. I think it's important for us to have that. I think it's important for us to be invested in stuff like NATO because I think the world order deserves some sort of policing. And, you know, truth be told, if I were in charge of this and, you know, didn't have to deal with a whole bunch of bullshit and maybe money wasn't so much a factor, like the UN and NATO would be used way more for, you know, humanitarian issues. Like the United Nations would be in like Western China right now releasing the Uyghurs from their re-education camps and stuff like that. We'd also be in Myanmar removing the military coup that just took over. We would absolutely be in many Central African republics that are just killing people and child, you know, army, making ch child soldiers and all that stuff. Like, that's honestly what I think those organizations should be doing. So I am all for a standing army because I am no pussy, but I do believe in using force. Like, as someone that's 6'1 and just north of 1,500 pounds, I have no problem using force to do the right thing. And I think that that's fine. And I think in the case of the American Revolution, yeah, it was the right thing. We had a standing army and we used it. But the reality is what we were celebrating is the 4th of July, which is the date that we signed the Declaration of Independence, which was all signed by people that were smart. They didn't need to carry guns. They were leaders. They were intelligent people. They were the thinking class. And the thinking class that would go on to do something like create the Electoral College because the mass of Americans were too fucking stupid to even vote. So we have the Electoral College. Keep that in mind. Those same people knew that the general common American was so fucking stupid that they couldn't figure out how to vote properly that they had to create the Electoral College. Keep saying that to yourself because those same people that signed the Declaration of Independence in every painting you see of it had zero guns but definitely had the wherewithal to know that most people in America were too fucking stupid to be trusted with something as sacred as the right to vote. Like they were onto something, and it had absolutely dick to do with them being armed because they didn't have any guns in that meeting. They brought their brains. I'm just saying. So when you see that meme and you see that post, what I want you to do is realize what it's for. And then I want you to think less about the person that's sharing the post. I know I do. I know I think less of all these people all the time. And, you know, it's hard to, like, keep thinking less and less of people you think less and less of. But it's neither here nor there. Also, I need a hat. And my hair is so gross. Actually, my hair is, like, my least gross thing at this point. Like, everything my, from my hair down to everything is just gross. And I apologize for my general appearance. Uh, I've talked way too much, and honestly, I had nothing to talk about. I did want to say one thing that I thought was interesting. Uh, I didn't really want to get into, like, abortion and Roe v. Wade, but I will say uh, we were sitting at the dinner table yesterday, and I was talking to my daughter, who was uh, talking to me about some of the blowback she's seeing. Like, And my daughter is not. She doesn't have a TikTok account. 
Uh, she doesn't have... I think she has Instagram. I think I made her get Instagram so she could be on Team Fiona. That sounds like a responsible parental thing to do. But she does watch a lot of YouTube. She's always been on YouTube. Uh, her brothers are. Corey, I think, lives in YouTube. I, I don't know if he has his passport or if he's just a naturalized citizen of YouTube. So it's not surprising. But she did say something that even she, at the ripe old age of 16, is starting to see some blowback. Uh, like TikTok videos that have been ported over or gone viral over to YouTube. And she was telling me about this video where the 17-year-old girl was calling around trying to see if she could adopt a baby. And everything, because every state in the union, you have to be at least 18. Sometimes you have to be 25. Sometimes you have to be all those things and 10 years older than the child. But at 17, universally in America, you cannot adopt a child. And would you like to know why? It's because you're not responsible enough and can't care for a child. And then it immediately ports over to like a 12 or 14-year-old girl that's looking to have an abortion because she's not responsible or old enough or cannot raise a child in this world. And it's the same people being like, no, you're absolutely, you'd be responsible enough to make that decision to have, you know, sex or whatever. So you're definitely responsible enough to have a kid. It just shows your hypocrisy right there. But I thought it was interesting being schooled on that from my 16-year-old daughter. All stuff I know, but now stuff she knows. So thank you very much, Supreme Court. Before we get into the Hard Rock Lunchbox, I do want to take a quick minute and actually just go over the stuff uh, that is going on. There is a brand new top 20 this week. I would appreciate if you watch it, like, share it, or whatever. I will say the views on those things are just absolutely abysmal, so I'm really just losing interest in doing the project at all. Granted, I did stop advertising them on Facebook, and maybe I'll start doing that again over the summer, but, like, dude, if I'm going to be doing this video for 10 views, like, I can think of 10 million other things I'd rather be doing, so it's not worth it to anybody, and I'm sorry, Bill, if it's totally worth it to you, I'll just, I'll keep doing it just for you. <laughs> uh, I just, the quality may go down, if that's even possible, but there is a new one, and it's basically this week. DJ says at this point, if you didn't know this was coming, referring to the Roe v. Wade thing, it's on you and you haven't been paying attention. And you're on notice to start paying attention now because they are not done. I still believe that. I know it's only been a week, but of course I believe that. Also, uh, on the show, uh, being on the other side of a really stressful weekend, uh, cracking oneself up due to two, uh, bad, bad behavior, real meaning of life is precious, all that other stuff. And is, uh, in Bacon is my podcast land. Uh, stud count is... The Stud and You and Stud Count bands are on part of the Soul Wet Fest. Uh, we played Stud Count here on the box. Uh, Taste Them is my passion. They do jerky me off beef jerky, which on the title alone seems like it's probably worth watching, so we'll check that out. Full interview with Becky Kovach from, uh, I think it's Kovach. Kovach? Kovach? I don't know. She'll tell me if she wants. Big Picture Media, So What Fest. Uh, full interview from uh, John from Keep Flying. Uh, and seven questions with Tyler from Mystery Schools. And that is all the news that is fit to print on uh, on Strangerhood TV. So check it out. Like, share, subscribe. I don't know. I don't even know what else you can do on there, but just do it all. And uh, we'll just keep that going. But, yeah, I am uh, I'm going to shut up related to the show because I showed up late and I talked too much. And I definitely have more stuff to talk about. Surprise, surprise, surprise. But right now, um, let's, uh, let's get you started, shall we? Uh, let's see. This ought to do it. <laughs> 